Hello everyone. Unfortunately, it has been much longer than I anticipated, but uh, my health issues were much more severe than the last couple of times that I've had to go in for a checkup. I'm not going to worry about it though. It's fine for now. I'll just hope that it doesn't happen again. But anyways, uh, while I was in my bed for most part, I was looking at Steam sales and of course um, some other things. I did notice Grim Dawn was on sale once again. It usually pops up on sale quite frequently anyways, but this time it was at a significantly lower cost than I've seen before, unless I missed something. So I decided to do a recording on Grim Dawn. There hasn't been many Grim Dawn recordings in recent times. I think the oldest one I've seen was eight months ago. So I decided to kind of do a recording to state where things are, at least as far as I can tell. Okay, um, Grim Dawn, as far as this year, is still being updated by the developers. I did notice this when I looked at the Steam page, because it said that in the last patch, I think it was, um, they kind of tweaked ranged weapons, and I forget exactly how they tweaked it, but they made it so that it's in-game viable now, or at least more in-game viable than it was prior. So the devs are certainly keeping up with it, not just in the actual gameplay, but also with uh, video card support and things like that. Um, I did notice that when I loaded Grim Dawn, Grim Dawn did recognize my video card despite it being much newer than when it was designed. So yes, it seems that they're keeping up with not just the game itself, but also with the hardware side of things, um, so that Grim Dawn can, I guess, play well enough on various devices. That said, um, I do think that this game is definitely worth it, even in 2022. Not just because of the fact that they're keeping up with it, but overall, if you can put up with the learning pains of this game, it actually can be a lot of fun. I will be fair, though, that it is going to be a lot more challenging than, say, Diablo 2 Resurrected or even uh, Titan Quest. Those are both things that are going to be much easier than this game, in my opinion. And that's just because of the way this game is. Grim Dawn does more, I guess you can say, item checks than the other two. Because like the other two, they kind of give you more time to kind of relax and learn in normal. But Grim Dawn just throws you in the deep end. There's just so much stuff that does damage, even in normal difficulty, uh, pretty early on. To a point where you do need to pay attention to what you're doing. And you'll notice this even more so if you turn on Veteran. Veteran's kind of like Normal Plus, I guess you could say. And then, of course, you got the other two difficulties. So, yes, it's certainly a bit more difficult, not just in learning the game, but also being aware of the tactics you need to use and things like that. But, like I said, if that's all not a problem, I would definitely recommend picking up this game on sale if you haven't. Or if you're just a returning player and haven't tried out the expansions, I would still do it, because it does provide you a lot of content to work with. That out of the way, I just kind of wanted to do a quick build uh, thing for you all. That way, if you are new to it or just returning, then you can hopefully follow one of these two builds that I've put out there. And there's a reason I've only done two. It's because I've done my best to make these builds as versatile as possible. So that means that these builds should be able to handle most situations on their own. Before um, I get into the builds, though, let me just quickly go over some things that are common between the two builds. So you will notice in both builds, their cunning is just high enough to wield in-game ranged weapons. And there's a very, very good reason for that. It's so that if you have to use ranged weapons as you level up to kind of get you through the game, then you can totally do that. It won't hurt you to have additional cunning. Not only that, the points aren't wasted even if you do reach this point in the game where you're starting to see these in-game ranged weapons. And the reason it's not wasted is because of the fact that this translates into offensive ability, which translates into your ability hit. So those points are definitely not wasted, even if you go this far out. Um, 
And of course, both of them have enough physique for wielding their um, armor. That's going to be pretty much the same for uh, the two builds and their stats. Now to look at the items. The uh, jewelry is going to be the exact same. Now, this top one you have to be aware of is only going to be possible to get if you complete the realm thing. You can read an entire thing on it because, unfortunately, it's not something I can remember well enough to explain to you. But point is, you have to do certain parts of the end game in order to have access to this. But once that access is unlocked, then you just simply purchase it for iron. So, actually, out of all the items, this is the easiest one. Well, I should say the more guaranteed one to get because it's very set in how you get it. Whereas the other one's not so much. Um... The other set of jewelry to be kind of aware of that I've made a target for these builds, and you might not honestly get to these um, jewelry, but I've made them a target regardless for very good reasons. Now, um, each build has a different reason for it, but both of them share the desire to get not just the HP, defense, and offensive value, but also to get the... Um, health and other things that are on these rings. Once these rings are paired together, then it only gets exponentially better because of the fact that uh, it's reducing the enemy's target resistance. Now, a quick thing on that. I've read some forum posts to kind of refresh my memory and things. Apparently, target reductions don't stack. That means that if you have this with, say, the Viper under your devotion, the two won't stack. And in that particular scenario, flat reduction is better than percent reduction. Because if you look, Viper is only 20%. So let's just say the enemy has 100% resistance to that particular type. Well, in that scenario, it's only going to reduce it by, uh, you know, a certain amount. But so, um, because you'd have to take 20% of 100. So... While it could certainly have the potential to scale higher, the flat is more versatile, is more or less where I'm going with this. So just kind of be aware of that when dealing with these kinds of things. But anyways, I'll go ahead and talk about the builds now, and more specifically why I've only done two and geared them in their own respective ways. We'll start with the Battle Mage. So, Battle Mage. Let's go over the skills first so you can kind of understand where things are. One of the more common builds back in the day, and maybe recently, I don't know if anybody's done Sorcerer recently, but Sorcerer's Demolitionist and uh, Arcanist. Now, that particular build can do a lot of damage um, for ranged combat, and it has some good things to go with it, um, such as the Brimstone Rounds and things like that to kind of help with its ranged AoE. But there is a problem with all this. And that problem is that as far as single target damage skills go, which is Fire Strike, you'll notice that it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage when you compare it to, say, Righteous Fervor or Cadence for that matter. And that's just because it's not a charge-up skill. It's just a flat damage thing. So you actually can do more damage with Cadence or Righteous Fervor when using a ranged weapon. Now, um, Brimstone... Another thing, too, to kind of note with this, brim, the Brimstone rounds, this one over here, while they certainly can do great, the problem is you have to have 12 points into it before you start seeing 4 to 5 fragments. So, yes, it takes a significant investment in that. And then, of course, there's some other problems, too, that persist with Sorcerer, such as its sustainability, um, you know, ability to take hits and things like that. But also in the fact that... You're not really going to be able to do as much damage um, with Canister Bomb or Granado as, say, um, Kalidor's uh, thing. And that's just simply because they're based on flat damage. Not only that, um, they're not easy to aim. There, there are times where you will actually miss them because you simply clicked wrong. 
So there's also player error to account for with this in comparison to Calidors and the other things, which just have a stupid amount of AoE regardless. And you'll even notice that, because look, um, Granada's three and a half, and Canister is, what is that, 3.2? Yeah, so 3.2. Now I want to compare that to um, this, which at max level is 16 meters, and this is 5.5. So as far as damage is concerned and radius, Actually, Caldors combined with Alexa's uh, Flash Freeze or whatever it is, uh, Alexa's, I'm sorry, uh, they will do a little bit better than Granado Canister. And not only that, they require significantly less points to be put into them. And there's more guarantee of an uptime. So, TLDR, it's, there's a lot of problems with doing Sorcerer, and I just don't see a point in going Sorcerer. Especially when the only thing there that you would really want anyways is Fire Strike. So it's actually better to switch over to Battle Mage so that you can use Cadence and those two AoEs I mentioned. Because they will do significantly better for you. And require less investments of points. So. Okay, so moving on. That's kind of the difference between Sorcerer and... Um, Demolitious versus Soldier and uh, Arcanist. Now, here um, is the skills for the Battle Mage build I did for kind of anybody to get into. Now, just be aware that this is going to require a bit more of a learning curve than the other one, and we'll get into that in a bit. But anyways, so with this particular build, you're going to go 8 into the Elemental Exchange, uh, 14 into Kaldor's Tempest, and then 9 into Inferno. And that's just because the points that are available to me are very spread thin on this build. So unfortunately, I couldn't max it out as much as I want to. But with the items, I can get it to a point in which it doesn't really matter anyways. Um, but I did that, and I did um, Star Pact, uh, Inner Focus, and Fabric of Reality. Now, Fabric Reality is a very, very good passive to have, simply because you'll be running into a lot of these types of enemies. And when you're doing plus whatever that is, yeah, 12%, that's a pretty good increase. So yeah, there's um, those skills, and I'll go into Star Pact in a minute, but just be aware that's on this side, and then for this side, I only did... One Field Command, um, all squad tactics... One Cadence, 10 Military Conditioning, and Max Scars of Battle, which is 8. So that's where the skills are distributed. Now let me just go back to Arcanus to show you why I did Star Pact. So you'll notice that Star Pact does 172, or I'm sorry, 102 Frostburn damage over 3 seconds. In addition to that, it's doing 15 Cold, Lightning, and Frostburn or I'm sorry, Cold and Lightning, and it's also converting Ether damage to Cold damage. We'll get into that in just a second. Let me compare this to Reckless Power for you. So Reckless Power doesn't give you a dot by itself. It gives you instead Ether damage, Fire damage, and um, more Ether damage. So you'll notice that it converts Physical damage to Ether whereas this one's converting ether damage to coal damage. Now, there's a very good reason for this. It's because um, this build is relying on Kalidor's Tempest for its AoE, as well as its kite. This build shouldn't need ranged, but if it happens to, then it can do that, simply because its skills aren't tied um, to a particular weapon. However, Kalidor's Tempest is going to be the main supporting one of the... Um, of the of the uh, the build so if you do find yourself using range you can get yourself within five and a half meters of the target and still whack them which is pretty good chunk of range but you will notice that under here it does say fire and ether damage that's why i did star pact because you'll notice that it's converting ether to um to cold damage so it's bringing it into uh a damage type that I have massive bonuses to. 
That's essentially why I'm doing that. And of course, fabric reality is flat ether damage, so I'm making more conversions there. So there's the skills. Now let's go ahead and um, talk about why I'm so concerned with that. So the end game target goal for this particular build is going to be uh, this particular weapon. Sion of Arcane Force. Now there's a very, very good reason for this um, particular weapon. One, it's the highest damage I'm able to find in the calculator. And two, it's tri-elemental damage. So I'm actually utilizing every single ounce of my abilities through this. Because if I did something like straight fire damage, well, the problem with that is I wouldn't really be able to trigger my... Um, Scaling damage as nearly as well as a tri-elemental. Now, I know it's risky doing tri-elemental, but again, that's why we have the rings. So we can reduce the uh, the resistances if we're on range. But if we're not on range, then this has its own resistance reduction. And uh, I don't know if they stack, because like I said, um, the, the threads are very confusing in how they handle it, but... Regardless, it would have been necessary for this build anyways. So there's another reason too, is um, because I'm doing tri-elemental and I'm not focused on a fire weapon for this particular build, then that means Star Pack does more for me than Reckless Power in terms of raw damage scaling. Now, um, just to quickly show you a ranged option so that you can um, know what to look for, you're looking for this. The Arcane Weaver is a tri-elemental uh, weapon, and I've actually tried um, utilizing this with um, uh, another uh, weapon. I forget its name, but it's a purple item that does kind of a similar thing, and that one just ended up doing less damage than this. I think it's probably because of its interaction with... Um, it's Chondrus. I think that's probably why this does more damage than the Legendary one, from what I'm able to tell. But either way, that's um, that's the whole purpose um, behind that. Now, um, if you are doing this at the end game uh, with this particular build, just be aware it's going to do less damage than the Scion, or for that matter, the Halberd. And actually, I'll go ahead and show you that real quickly, just so you know what to look for. So if you can't get to Scion quite yet, um, the Corvin Burning Halberd's the next highest damage that I've been able to find in the calculator. It brings your damage from about 19k to 13k, going from Scion to this, that is. So it is a very big uh, reduction in your, um, your damage output, but um, it's still pretty good. I mean, 13k is 13k. So um, that's just if you have to do it, though. Um, oh yeah, and the last thing we need to talk about with this build is that minus 10% acid. So unfortunately, I just can't work around that issue because everything you're seeing here, uh, Cinder Touch, Boots of Primordial Rage, Crimson Lotus, and all this other stuff, those are all the core items of these build. So um, I, can't go, I can't get around that. I've done my best to introduce acid resistance. So you're just going to have to either get it from a relic or a batch thing, which is these two slots down here. You'll notice those are empty, so those give you plenty of flexibility. Um, because there are multiple options with them, and it's going to take me a while to explain them, I'm just going to let you figure it out um, and figure out which one works best for you. Because each one has a different proc and all that other stuff. So, um, Oh, and then right, the, um, the whole decision behind this belt. So you'll notice that the boots are level 84 and the belt's 84, but they're both mythical. So it's kind of weird because most, myth most mythicals are 94, but these two happen to be 84. Now, there's a reason I picked this particular one. So uh, you'll notice it does fire and burn, 
which is what this build uses. But more importantly, um, I was looking for the health, offensive ability, uh, pierce, and poison resistance. Those were the main reasons I got this. Yes, there are a lot of skills on this page that um, that's not usable, and that's perfectly okay because I couldn't find a suitable plus health and plus acid resistance um, item with health on it, so this was the best I could do under the circumstances. So um, that's, and oh, uh, the really great pants. So I looked at the fabric pants, whatever they're called, fabric of reality, and uh, the elemental... Uh, thing so um, oh it's like elemental harmony pants or something like that whatever the other two pants are I looked at them individually the DPS difference was about 300 or I, sh I should say the max damage difference I'm sorry max damage difference between really great pants and the elemental harmony was about 300 so it wasn't that much of a damage change and on top of that it's giving me plus health so there's a reason I have really great pants there um, the other one, the fabric, that actually can change the DPS much higher, but it doesn't have plus health on it, so that doesn't work either. So there's all of your reasonings for aiming for these particular core items. Moving on. Okay, uh, let's see. Alright, so the other one is Soldier and Oathkeeper. So Battle Mage is Soldier and Arcanus, this one is with Oathkeeper in place of that. So um, this one is going to be a little bit more straightforward of a build to do than the other one simply because it has the necessary stats to just simply wear plate mail and just face tank everything. Um, the other build is a hybrid, so you do have to be a little bit more aware of stat distribution and other things like that, but this build is a lot more straightforward in that once you reach a certain point, it's pretty much just set in stone. So, um, the, um, the thing that you have to be aware of with this build is that it's going to be all melee. There are, there is a ranged weapon you can use, can use, I'm sorry, but, um, it's very, very specific, and it's a mythical purple, and that's the only one that can give you enough damage to actually do anything. Unfortunately, all the green weapons for range just don't do enough damage with this particular build. And on top of that, you don't have the skill support because um, the build is shooting for Judgment and um, Eye of Reckoning for your AoE. Eye of Reckoning is melee specific, whereas um, Judgment isn't. So you'd be without your... Um, I have Reckoning if you're using ranged. But everything else applies on this build. So that's just kind of what to be aware of. Now, uh, with this build, I only did four points into um, I have Reckoning at the end because you're getting plus four. Uh, for this one, I think it was like two or three I did. And then it was like plus six or seven from the items. Um, and then, of course, I max all of this out. I max that out. I didn't max this out. Um, because I was trying to max um, Divine Mandate, um, Guardian of Empyrean, and Celestial Presence. This is another reason 2 range doesn't really work on this build, is because the Celestial Presence is giving you the ability to do more damage on your enemy, essentially. So you do want to be within melee range so that these two are whacking them. And because also you're doing more ma uh, maximum damage in melee range anyways. So there's a very good reason that this build is not for ranged. The other build, the Battle Mage one, can certainly switch between them without much of a difference in damage. But, yeah, so um, let's go and talk about uh, why these and why they have such weird interactions. Because you'll notice this one's fire, this one's physical, so let's talk about that. So part of my problem and why that's being converted to fire is because of the uh, set that I'm shooting for on this build, which is going to be um, face Guards of Justice. So the reason I went Face Guard of Justice, only three, um, was to trigger the extra damage plus judgment, armor, and all that good stuff. So I need at least three to trigger that. So I've chosen these three. And you'll notice I did really great pants again. 
both bells are using them. Uh, this one is doing it because it's, well, damaged, just like the other one. And also because of health. I mean, this build has tons of health, so I guess you could switch it if you really want to, but I don't see a point in doing it because it's giving you enough cunning to, um, to where you don't have to spend a whole bunch into it to reach that 572 uh, marker. But you're also using um, Wind Shear Greaves. Uh, Runa Greaves is an alternative to this build, um, but it's not going to be as much damage in comparison, so I would definitely go with this um, instead of that. Um, it is using a different belt. It's using this one because health is really not that important to this build. I felt it was better to go with um, the uh, piercing and um, acid resistance along with the health regen and other things, the 60% all damage, yada yada, so there's that. And instead of Iskandra's set, which is what the other build was using, this one's actually using the Shattered Realm chest piece. I did that because of the 60% all damage. It's, um, it's really good for this particular build. But if you um, aren't able to get to there yet, you can use um, Divine Steel Hopperk, I think is its name. Don't worry, I'll put everything in the description. And I'll also link you to these builds so you can kind of toy them with them on your own accord. Um, but yeah, so there's a very specific reason for that. Um, okay, and then the last thing we need to cover is Gore Drinker. So while this is your in-game target for your melee because of the fact that it's doing a whole bunch for you, the problem is you may not be able to get to it yet. And if you can't, you can use the um, Corvin Celestial Halberd or the Steward's Halberd. I'll show you both of them real quickly. Let's see, that's under axes. Okay, so here's Steward's Halberd. It's not really going to do that much for you. I mean, I guess they both don't, but this one does Buyer's Might and Cadence, so you don't really use those. But the fire damage converted to physical is pretty good because you are doing um, some fire damage. And then the other one is up here. So this one um, is the complete opposite. It's going to give you um, the, uh, the blade arc thing. And um, really that's about the only thing that's a benefit here. So I think the other one's a little bit better, but I'll leave that up to you. And... I'll show you why real quickly. Um, so here. So the problem with Blade Arc is it's a 180 degree uh, attack and it only maxes out to five targets. So if you're in a massive, massive Zerg, this is really not going to do anything for you. And on top of that, it can make it a headache for you because of the fact that it has a chance to knock down the target. Or wait, is it knock down or knock back? Yeah, knock down. Okay. So yeah, it knocks down the target, which could push them out of the, um, the arc. So I really don't think that this is a great skill. Uh, force Wave is actually kind of good, but again, just like the Granado thing I was just explaining, it's entirely dependent on you clicking in the right spot. So while it is very good, the problem is, can you hit that spot? And if you don't, well, it sucks. That's why I've chosen to go with um, two points into Judgment. Because even though Judgment has a longer cooldown, it's got a bigger uh, radius once you reach that 9-point benefit. Um, it is 9.1, so that's a pretty good chunk of the screen. Um, but yeah, so once you do that, and then um, combine it with Reckoning, you should be able to hit all targets. You might have to move up a little bit, but if... If it happens that way, it happens that way. So that's kind of the um, the builds and their summary. I'll link everything in the description um, because if I go through all the all the other stuff like the devotion and stuff, it's um, it's going to take me even longer to explain. And I'm already at 29 minutes. You should be able to figure out the devotion stuff pretty easy. Uh, but basically, each devotion is focused towards. Um, Lifesteal, um, sustainability, uh, damage, so pretty straightforward things. But yeah, if you have a specific question on the uh, devotions, assuming that they're not as obvious, then um, that or not as obvious as I think they will be, 
then just ask me in the comments. I'll do it. But we're already at 30 minutes, so I need a break. But um, if you listen to this, thanks.